Jordan, we can't play guards with just two people. What should we do instead? Should we just talk about guards? I'm down. All right, let's <laughs> do it. Welcome to Optimal Play. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jordan. And we've been playing a lot of Guards of Atlantis lately. Guard, sure Guards of Atlantis 2. Guards of Atlantis I should too. say. Did you yeah. ever play the first one? No, I didn't. Me neither. Okay. <laughs> it's, I, don't, I think that's the case for a lot of people. I think it, yeah. it hit wider circulation in, in 2. I had never heard of it until Guards of Atlantis 2's campaign came along. I don't know how that... How it flew under my radar, because it's totally my jam. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it looks a lot better now. It's a lot more popular now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the first printing was pretty small. I guess. I'm remembering right. yeah, it probably was. I've never, I've never seen one. <laughs> never right. Seen a copy right. I've never seen one either. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I, this game is great. It's, yeah, it's really fantastic. And we've been um, on the channel for games that we love as much as we love games like this. We like to sometimes uh, do deep dives into the characters, the cards. Kind of just uh, sharing our strategies and thoughts as we explore the game, I guess is how I'd put it. Right. I think that's right. Yeah. Like, I don't know about you. I don't purport to be an expert. <laughs> no, I'm Atlantis. certainly not an expert. <laughs> Far from it, in fact. So uh, take any strategy advice that I have with a grain of salt, I guess is what I'd say. Feel free to uh, augment my thoughts in the comments. Yeah, right. I think these videos should be designed for someone who's playing against this character because it gives you a general mm. sense of what they do and the possibility space, but it doesn't necessarily give you the optimal strategy for how to pilot them. That's a good way of looking at it, yeah. So next time you're going to sit down with your friends to play guards, just make your make the opposing team choose their characters like a day in advance. <laughs> right, so you can watch the videos. Come yeah, watch our yeah, videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be ready. Um, well, we're starting with Brogan the Destroyer. I'm wondering right now, did we start alphabetically? Is this <laughs> of all of, of, the, of, of the one star characters? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's how we do no, it. No, we didn't because there's um, oh, Arian. Arian, yeah. yeah. Okay, well then, never mind. We're yeah. we're going at random. This is well, this is a character that you almost always see in your first game of guards for whatever reason because he looks cool or because experienced players will put him in front of you. I think he really demonstrates the way guards works especially with his red attack card, which we'll get into. Yes, his that, it is my go-to example every time I've taught this game. Yes, yeah. talk, talk about Brogan's red attack, because right. it, is, it, it demonstrates so many of the rules of the game all in one card. Yeah. Um, but why don't, you, uh, why don't you introduce us to Brogan, I guess? Like, sure. uh, read us his intro, and then we can talk about him for a moment before diving into the cards. Okay, Brogan the Destroyer. This is, a, this is some flavor text here. Brogan regained his senses in the midst of battle. War drums resonated with the pounding in his ears, and the elf made a note to quit Drakenhof Grog. As the enemy mounted their charge, he reached behind them, behind him, excuse me, first feeling the strings of his lute, then the handle of his axe. I had, uh, it's been a little while since I read that. I, so, I've always thought it was great and different that the, like, kind of quintessential barbarian character is an elf. Yeah. That's not usually the most fantasy settings, like, elves are not... Angry sword and shield people. Sure, or big, uh, like yeah. yeah, not even a sword, an axe, you know. Right, right, and then, uh, but I hadn't caught that he also has a loot. That's yeah, his alt blue cards, which we'll talk about, are musically themed. Oh, okay, I had not, um, had not grokked that. I think so. I think I'm right about that. Yeah, you're you're the one holding them. Oh, do I? Have the right, or you're the one holding them actually. Uh, oh, the blue ones. Is it, is it I'm blue? not. Oh, no, it's, sorry, it's all the greens. War, oh, okay. War drummer and master oh, skull. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to those. Look, there's his loot. You'll see this art later. Yeah. Master <laughs> skull, there's his loot. Huh, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, all right, yeah. to, to the, uh, trawling through the art of these characters, too, and, and learning a little bit more about what they're up to. Uh, so, so, Brogan's high on attack and defense, and I, this... I have a little bit of trouble understanding some of the the roles here because he is uh, as low as you can be with this little meter as an initiator. But initiator is defined as a character that starts and ends fights, right? By by this game, and he, as we'll look at, he charges in. Like, how can that be not a quintessential initiation style? I think because he his attacks are so predictable, maybe mm. maybe it's hard to like. They're easy to play around, so it's sort of hard to initiate. It's hard for him to initiate things. Interesting. Maybe. Okay. I think it's worth talking about that his initiative is relatively low. He's kind of slow, and his movement is also low, so he's slow in that way. As well. <laughs> That's the one that when I played Rogan, I feel is like he has a hard time getting across the map. Yeah, and a tough time <laughs> going first, and a tough time going first. Yeah, most of the time. yeah, that too. Um, all right, shall we uh, dive into his abilities? Yeah, sure. 
Um, oh, I guess they're like I don't I don't know. So he's got I, some heal and self heal. That he, basically means he can pick up cards that have been discarded or help his uh, teammates pick up cards. That have yeah, been these like traits down here. I I've never had a I haven't really found a good. Um, way to think of them or use them either like the fact that brogan says long range when all of his starting abilities are melee mm -hmm. and you would have to kind of and then you you have the option to like zag into a pretty specific ranged ability like uh, it's surprising to me that long range is like his first listed trait on here interesting yeah maybe it's because his red attacks even his melee attacks involve him moving so he could he has like uh, a, i guess that's one way to look at long range his bad yeah. range also is ranged so i hadn't thought about that that his charge is ranged certain, sort of yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though it's a melee attack right huh interesting yeah so so i don't know maybe as we um explore more of these characters we'll, we'll I'll, I'll get a better idea of what it's trying to say with with these yeah I think it makes sense to come back to these tips after we've gone through the starting five. Okay, right? yeah, let's end with those. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, that, well, uh, I think we're looking at their basic cards first. Sure, yeah. Right? So his gold basic attack is Onslaught. It has 11 initiative, which is uh, medium slow for a gold card, I feel like. Right. Every gold card yeah. is the character's fastest card, so 11 is not impressive. And in... I... So... Is 11 the lowest gold card? Do, do you know? Because uh, last time I was playing this, we actually took a look as we were just kind of talk, chatting uh, post-game or something, and everyone's gold card at, at the table was higher than anyone else's any other card. So, like, gold card was always going guaranteed to be a non-gold card. I wonder if that's a blanket truth about the entire game or not. If it's not a blanket truth, then it is a good heuristic. Yeah. It might not be true in every case, but in almost every yeah, case. Yeah, I bet it's true of the ones that are yeah, complex I think characters. That's true. Yeah. So so then uh, I think that the other colors go up to ten and so eleven it might be about as low as the gold cards come. Yeah, I think so, that's right. So he's slow is, is what I'm saying. And anyway, I guess let me finish reading this card. <laughs> uh it's got three defense, one whole space of movement on it. And then a basic attack for three that says target a unit adjacent to you after the attack move into the space it occupied. And he's just doing essential barbarian pose here. Right. <laughs> Bloody dax over his head. Uh, this is about as standard a card as it comes, I feel like. Yeah, it's relatively basic. It does have the advantage of moving into the space. So there's a little bit of flexibility with that. Yeah, only if it kills something does that matter. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah, because it just doesn't say push it. It just says move into the space it occupied, which is only possible if it's if it's dead. Right. But given the low attack value, you're probably usually using this to kill a minion. Yeah. Unless you're just trying to get an early discard out of a hero's hand and then hit them with a bigger attack down the road. Yeah, so far my experience in the game is that most... Most hero kills come from the like thousand cuts style instead of yeah. instead of one big attack for eight. So I don't know. I I wouldn't um, discount attacking heroes with this. Yeah, that's fair. But if you do attack heroes with this, you're most likely not getting a move. Right. Uh, all right. What's the silver card? So the silver card, and this is an interesting thing about uh, guards two versus guards one. I think the silver cards used to just be blank. They just had holes on them. Yeah. I I I I well I I. That's my understanding, too, because I think you've told me that before. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's right. I could be wrong. Um, but essentially, these cards are super specific, uh, but, but powerful, just, you know, in a limited set of circumstances. So this is Bulwark. It is a five-initiative card with a four-defense value on it, and its text is a, a two-radius skill. Choose one. Either this round you and friendly units in radius cannot be moved, pushed, swapped, or forced to move by enemy heroes. Mm -hmm. Or, if your discard is empty, retrieve this card. Yeah, that's actually, I think, fairly powerful. I mean, it's pretty powerful in limited circumstances, exactly like you said. Um, stopping force movement can be really valuable, completely depending on what your opponents are up to. Right. Uh, but then I really like the... So, I have definitely, and as I've gotten a little bit better at the game, I'm not, not claiming to be good at the game... But I have, 
I've more and more found myself actually wanting to do nothing sometimes on turn, like, say, two to save my attacks for later when my opponents have fewer options to discard to defend them and that kind of thing. And this is because as long as you don't have a card in your discard, you can actually play this to do, do nothing and then recover it. Right. It seems really good to me. That as I'm getting better at the game, I'm really seeing the value of that. Right. I would consider that to be a heal ability, right? It helps you have more cards to discard when you're being attacked down the road. Yeah, I guess it's heal. It's it, it's ironic to call it healing because it doesn't work if he's been hit. Right, that's true, <laughs> that's true. It's almost more like armor or something. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's more like armor. But, you know, towards the end of the turn when you only have, you know, one card left on turn four or maybe none if you've been hit, having an extra card in your arsenal is really valuable. Yes, and one with a decent defense value. And one with a decent defense value. Although this card is relatively slow, so if you think you're going to be hit this turn... You can't oh, play this. It's too slow. It's too slow. You'll to have discarded it back up before you discard something else. That's a good point. Yeah, so you, you have to do it, you know, proactively. A, a full turn before you think you might be attacked. Right. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So it might be a good turn one play if you're if you're if you don't have anything proactive that you're really rushing to do. Right. Uh, I think that's probably the best time to play it. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Um, what are some good cards that this is strong against? Cards. Heroes who do have a lot Ooh. of movement. Yeah, Zargatha and and again I've played with mostly the one star characters. So right. That's what I'll be bringing up here. Oh, yeah, that's uh, fair. Arian and Zargatha both do a lot of force movement. Yeah, so right. it's a good a good meta pick against those. I haven't played a ton of the two star three star mm -hmm. characters, but Bane also has a, a pretty strong move effect. Sure, that lets you you know target someone and pull them towards you, and this would be a strong prevent on that. Yeah, and the other one that stands out to me is um, Sabina, the Gunslinger's um, gold basic attack, point-blank shot pushes back one. Although, as I'm finishing this thought, I was thinking like, well, that helps you stay in melee range so that you can use your basic attack, but if you've played this card, you're obviously not basic attacking that turn, so maybe... Well, this is the this round effect. Oh, it is this round! Oh! So yeah, we should say that this, when you play this, if you turn that effect on, it's good for all four turns. Right. Yeah, I miss I misprocessed that to be this turn here as we're talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. So you play play this first, and then yeah, you can't be point point blank shot a little, which would go a little faster than your basic attack, and then your basic attack would whiff. Right. Which uh, is something that we've seen. We've seen Sabina push back. I'm not sure if it was Brogan or someone else, but push back someone immediately before she would have died. And so this can prevent that if you're Brogan. Yeah. It's pretty strong. Yeah. You play it early in a round if you're up against Sargatha and, you know, just turn all those effects off. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I still think it's... I, I like it better for its other effects in most cases because you're going to be in the middle of the fight. You pro, your, your opponents are probably at least considering attacking you. Like, the, the time that, that's, that recovering the card is not useful is if they have no interest in targeting you. Right. Um, but I feel like Brogan's... A, a big target because he's in the fray. He's the front line. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I think there's pros to both effects. Sure, yeah. sure. I think that the the preventing movement effect is flashier. It's more exciting when you can turn off a bunch of skills. That's true. Just picking up a card feels like whatever. It's, but it might be more powerful you're, to you're, pick up the card. You're more likely to enrage your opponents uh, by preventing the movement. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Recovering this card. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of diving into the fray, his red, his uh, tier one red card is Mad Dash. It has seven initiative, seven defense, three movement speed on it. Uh, but if you play it to attack, it's for six. And it says before the attack, move two spaces in a straight line to a space adjacent to an enemy unit, then target that unit. And it even has here in uh, reminder text, if you cannot make the move, you cannot attack. And that reminder is why we were saying that this is such a good example for teaching the rules of this game. Right. Right. Because if you can't perform the text, it's not a may, right? You must do it. And yeah. So this attack is very, something you can play against very easily, right? Just don't stand in a straight line or next to a straight line with Brogan, and you're safe from this red attack. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's a very powerful card that's very hard to pull off. Right. Right, because attacking for six with a tier one card is, like, some characters just won't have the ability to defend against that. That'll just be a kill against some of them. Yeah, maybe later in the round. I feel and, like most characters have at least one six shield. Do, do they? I'm not sure. Maybe, no, they, maybe, maybe they do. Right. So some of them, like, Dodger only has one if there are dead minions. Oh, interesting. And so, like, some of them are situationally boosted to that, okay. to that level. I can see that. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like this is... Very likely, more likely than most like tier one cards to kill a hero, even if they have cards in their hand. Sure. But it's also very easy to interrupt. Right. It goes pretty slow at a speed of seven. 
uh, they can move closer to you, one of their allies can stay, can move in just to stand in your way, or they could simply just like sidestep or, or position themselves so that you can't move two spaces and be adjacent to them. Right, right. Well, or, or push you. If you haven't stopped forced movement, you could get pushed to where this doesn't work. That's a good point. There's a lot of ways it goes wrong. Yeah. I think the funniest is just standing right next to Rogan, right? If you yes. just stand right next to him, it's not work. <laughs> but I've seen some clever, there's been some clever maneuvers that have pulled off this card. Like in one of our last games, Rogan was standing behind one of, the, one of the, his teammates. Hmm. And so I thought, oh, he can't attack me in a straight line. His teammate is between us. Uh, and then his teammate just moved out of the way. And I had played a very slow card that turn because I thought I was safe and his teammate just moved and he came in and smacked me. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, right? <laughs> Did you die then? No, I had, you had, you I had, had a big exact defense. defense. But okay. if I had that, we would have lost. So it was very close, yeah. That's that's great. Yeah, I love this card. I think that the uh, one tip I would give with it is if you can, like even if you intend to... Um, if you intend to hit a hero with it, if you can set yourself up to have a minion as plan B, to where if they if That's they right. block you or move so you can't target that, you have oh you're not wasting the card. Yes. You always want to have uh, have that possibility and make it so that your opponents have to choose yeah. you know, between two options as opposed to choose between dying and no effect. Right, right. right. Um, and it, like using it as movement if your attack isn't going to work. Three spaces is I think as good as Brogan gets, so that's that's a that's right. a decent outcome, but if you can attack a minion, you're getting some movement then or two, mm -hmm. and and getting the minion kill in gold. And that's a common a common trend that the red card will have the highest defense, the highest movement, and the biggest attack strength. Yeah, it's such an interesting aspect of this game that like everyone's red card is pretty uh, un inarguably their best card. I don't know but, if I would say that. It really, is their, it is their best card in terms of killing something it is like their their best card that but it's also impact. their best card at defending and their best card at moving yeah but sometimes like, your best card is really like some odd skill or effect that is like oh this character is all about that skill sure yeah that's fair you know? i just think it's really interesting that it's not like it, what at least what i haven't seen is is like someone someone's green card is their best movement card and their gold or silver card is their best defense card like oh, you, yeah. you have to make that's you have to make a decision with one card that is always really great at all things that's true that's and so, like, if you need your biggest defense, you're just not moving as well that round as you right. have. It's it's a really well designed trade off. Yes, I agree. Yes. Uh, what's what's he got next? Green cards next. This is shield. Um, this is a five initiative. So again, relatively slow. Um, four defense, two movement card, and it has a skill with a radius of two. It says this round, if a friendly melee minion in radius would be defeated, you may discard a card. If you do, the minion is not defeated. And the art is Brogan holding his shield with two blue minions next to him, it looks like. Oh, are they? Yeah, those are minions. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this effect essentially lets him, you know, protect minions that would otherwise be defeated in order to forestall a push, right? In yeah. In order to help your team push, right? Have you ever seen a Brogan actually do this? Yeah, I have. Oh, okay. I, think I, don't, this I don't think I have yet. Well, so it really just depends, right? Oftentimes your enemy will, like, the, the opposing team will be going towards one victory condition or the other, mm -hmm. right? They'll be trying to win by kills, they'll be trying to win uh, by pushes, and if you see them just going for pushes, you need to do something about that, this is the card to do. It, That's right? true. It's a great card. Yeah. And, and you can also discard additional cards without fearing an attack on yourself, right? If they're really going for the push condition. Or right. if you die, then, you know, that death is not a huge deal because they're not going to have too many deaths that they're able to accomplish. They're really more push focused right yeah that's true um i think i've seen this as being probably his most regularly played for movement card well green cards are usually have a good amount of movement on yeah them. yeah for him two spaces of movement is second only to his red card because he is uh he is a slow runner and and yeah it seems like i don't know i guess even though you can discard a card to protect a minion here like a that starts to risk if he does take one hit him losing some turns which hurts. And then B, he's, he's really good at killing minions left and right, and that to me is just as good well, as... If you think like, about it this way, right, like in a first round, mm -hmm. every hero, or in any given round, every hero has two attack cards. So the if you're in a four-player game, mm -hmm. you can potentially kill, you know, four minions, and they can kill four minions. And this makes it so they can only kill three, right? Like... If you play this properly, yeah, they can only kill true. three, and that's the difference, right? Like, once you get ahead, you start spiraling into the push. 
Yeah, we need to play Brogan again after this. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> hopefully we'll feel that way after every character. I'm sure we will. I bet. I bet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, his, his last starting card is Brutal Jab. It's his blue card, and it has nine initiative, six defense on it, two movement speed, and it's a skill. Choose one, remove a token adjacent to you, or push an enemy minion adjacent to you up to two spaces. Uh, this one, actually, I think I... Not, now that I read this, I think I have to correct myself. I think this is the one that I largely have seen used to move. Okay, fair enough. Um, it, it is his, it is his uh, best non-red defense at six. It's a really good defense card, and, right. and blue cards tend to be. But these, um, I guess it's because I've mostly played with the base game characters so far that there are not a lot of tokens on the board to remove. Right. right? So, so half of this has, I have not really uh, seen being um, even doable. Yeah. And then, yeah, pushing an enemy minion adjacent to you uh, can be useful, but it's pretty hard to line that up in a way that feels super valuable, I feel like. Right. The easiest character to do that against would be Brogan. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah. red> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brogan would be great against Brogan. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, this is, a, I, I love, the art is like from the uh, point of view of his fist, though. <laughs> as, it, as it extends towards your face, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that this is very seldom going to be played for its text. Yeah, I think only if you're going up against a character that uses a lot of tokens, right? And there are some characters that have pretty valuable tokens once you get into the two star sure. characters. Yeah. I'm thinking of, like, Min, for instance. But, you know, in the one star characters, yeah, there's nothing there, right? Yeah, pushing an enemy minion adjacent to you... Uh, is can be a really good effect but it's one of those things that i i feel and maybe it's my skill level of the game but i feel like it's difficult to know when i'm selecting my card whether that will be a good effect mm. once once i can see once we reveal cards and i see oh someone has played their red that's slower than this clearly intended to kill a minion then maybe i would decide to push it but right it's hard to set out to do that especially because if, if they if it does look like someone wants to kill a minion their gold card would go before this so right. you maybe can't even stop it. Right. So in terms of, like, defensive use, which is what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. which I actually, actually this can only be used defensively, push an enemy minion. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Uh, it could push an enemy minion into the attack range of, an, of a right. teammate. Yeah. So this could also be used offensively, right? It could. To push a minion, that, like, maybe you've played both of your attacks and your teammate is too far from this minion mm -hmm. to get a kill. You can push this minion towards them to kill them. It's true. Right? It doesn't actually push a friendly minion, so you can't right. use it in the same way as shield. Uh, to, like, oh, save. oh, that's you can't right. use it to save that's one right. of your you're, minions. You're right. I was, mis I was misthinking about that. Yeah, you can't save min minions with it. Right. Um, one of the, actually, maybe it's because I've seen Dodger in almost every game of this that I've played, but this also moves a minion off of their starting position, which okay. could, could turn on Dodger's abilities. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good combo. So a, a, little, a little interaction there. Sure, yeah. But, yeah. Sabina, too, right? Sabina cares a lot about whether there are minions in her radio. Oh, no, those are friendly minions, though. Never mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she, she, the friendly minions are extra friendly right. to, to Sabina. Um yeah, yeah. I think this is mostly a movement and uh, movement and defense card. I think that's probably right. But maybe, at least, at least in our experience, yeah. Where the inexperienced players think of this card as not good. Maybe it has the best effect in the game. Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> let us know it's in the possible. comments. Yeah. yeah. Let us know. And also, uh, when we circle back to blue cards, we'll look at its upgrades, and maybe that will change our change our mind about the general thing that this card is doing. I sure. could not tell you off the top of my head what its upgrades are. Right. Right. I couldn't either. <laughs> Uh, speaking of upgrades... Well, do you want to take a second to talk about the starting hand? Yeah, and, actually. And the tips, maybe? That's or... a good point. Yeah. Um, you want to, want to read us the tips? And yeah, so can... the tips say, if you expect trouble, play your silver card. Okay. That's the one that allows you to either prevent movement or um, retrieve the card. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's saying, if you expect trouble in the next few turns, play this. And you can you know, yeah. sort of either yeah. turn on this effect or have a little bit more health. I, I think I found that kind of baffling when I went back to it at the end of a game playing Brogan, and I was like, I always expected trouble. <laughs> this is not a game where trouble is in the distant future. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's funny. Um, it says, use fast travel and attacks with built-in movement to compensate for low mobility. So that's referencing yep. the red. Yep, for sure. Um, don't let yourself get stranded away from the action. That's happened to me before in a game with Brogan, and it's rough, because he's so, he's so slow. If you can't fast travel, because there's an enemy unit in your zone... You're kind of screwed. You're inching forward. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. in trouble. 
Um, and if you're playing against Brogan, do that to them. You know, like mm -hmm. that's an easy way to remove their effect from the fight. You know? Yeah, if like, you can if wasp he's, silver card, for instance. If he's already on the edge of the fight and you can push him two or three more spaces out of it, like that's a big setback for Brogan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, an action card in hand may be as much of a threat as an action card, as a, sorry, an attack card played, an attack card in hand. Um, so that's referring to the fact that people sort of have to play against your red card yeah. with it in mind and always position, uh, you know, to avoid that attack. So if you can put yourself in a position to sort of block the best hexes, um, that's a strong, it's a strong thing to do, right? Yeah. Or, or just, um... Or yeah, you're you're, exa you're exactly right, and so this is kind of saying, I guess, bluff a little, right? It's like let let your opponents spend their tools to play around your red card, and then play it turn four. Yeah, <laughs> right? I think that's right. It's kind of what it's getting up. at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then finally, do not es underestimate your support options. So that's the green shield. Yeah. Wow, this is directed. It actually says, do not underestimate your support options, Brandon. Oh, can you believe they printed that on me? <laughs> How do they know? How do they know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. Yeah. <laughs> I figured. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I mean, it's silver and green, and, and both blue. have and and blue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't really think of minion manipulation as support, but okay. may, maybe in, maybe maybe the game does though. Maybe yeah. maybe that is what they mean by that. So I I think of that as mostly looking at the silver card and the preventing force movements. Yeah, that's and then fair. and then also these tips um, sometimes don't make as much sense uh, until you've looked at the upgrades. As, that's true. As they will. Right. Um, should we get to the upgrades? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read both of the um, straightforward upgrades to the red cards. Right. So for every card, yeah. this is our first video of this type. For true. every card, there's a sort of a straight line upgrade. Mm -hmm. Those cards, if you're looking at them, have similar art to the level one card yep and usually their stat increases or you know they slightly expand what the effect can do and then there's usually a zag and the zag is something totally different that um you know falls into the same camp so for red it would still be an attack card but it lets you do an effect that's divergent where did you get that term you always you always use that but but i read the rules and it's not the game's term the calling those cards zags oh you, know, you, you just, zig and you zag right yeah, it's okay. like, i don't know the same card's a zig, right? I think we all know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just think, you know, when you're playing games sometimes and you see a sort of straight line path and, you know, maybe someone else is going on the same path or you just want to try something different, I, I just use that term and say, oh, I'm going to zag here, mm. right? I'm going to... Yeah, I don't know that, I don't know that zag alone as a, as a word is a term that's really been in my vocabulary until now, but... Uh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> 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 Alright, well, if you're not going to zag with your red card, you would upgrade it to Bull Rush, which, and I should pull up the red card uh, so, so that I can see the differences. Um, from Mad Dash to Bull Rush, keeps the same initiative, gains a defense, uh, still has three movement, gains a, uh, I, oh, it's, it's, an, it's an orange minion behind him that, that he is now swinging his axe at instead of just swinging his axe to swing it. Okay. Um, uh, now the text says, before the attack, move two or three spaces in a straight line to a space adjacent to an enemy unit, then target that unit. The difference obviously being two or three instead of exactly two on his movement. Mm -hmm. And then if you upgrade that linearly, you end up with Furious Charge, adding yet another orange minion to the art, and upgrading the initiative to eight, the attack to seven, and then uh, before the attack... And the defense to eight as well. Uh, isn't that what I said? Oh, no, sorry, you're right. Oh, sorry, no, oh, no. Yeah. I was looking at the wrong one. Yep. Um, and then before the attack, move two, three, or four spaces in a straight line to a space adjacent to an enemy unit and target that unit. Right. Uh, and it's worth mentioning when you take these upgrades, when you take the level two upgrade, you also get an extra defense. Mm. And when you take the level three upgrade, you gain an extra radius. Well, oh, oh yeah, because you're holding the, right. the other options. Right, yeah, exactly. So those yeah. two cards come with these two upgrades. Yep. Uh, oh man, I don't. I don't know if we can process all that every card we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. We can try. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Um. So, yeah, it just makes his. I think that these tend to take his. Um. At least upgrading to bull rush tends to take his mad dash from something that fails most of the time to something that fails a lot less of the time, because you can use it when targets are further away and it's that much harder to for them to move too close or something sure um or just you can just have more options you're more likely to have that minion that you can hit instead or something uh then i have felt, i don't think i got high enough level to need to do all my level threes i don't think when i played brogan i upgraded to the level three 
to, to, to the red... I don't think I upgraded the red card to level 3. I thought that the ex addition of a fourth space felt like a really just like a nice to have, but it's pretty rare that four spaces away there would be someone you want to attack who is like in a str four spaces in a straight line is a really specific area that you're charging into at that point. Um, yeah, I think the value of that level three is actually in this radius upgrade. Right, because mm. the radius upgrades are very strong, right? That extends your shield effect. That True. extends some other effects that you can turn on. So that would be my pro that would be what I was looking at primarily in that level three upgrade. But I agree, yeah. this is not a very exciting card to add to your hand. You're never like, oh yeah, I can go one more space. Like yeah. This. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the the flip side though, as as we we look at the uh, the zag red cards, is that if you take the other option here, you get a movement speed boost, which is. Huge for Brogan. Huge for Brogan. It like practically doubles his movement speed. On right. His cards. Right. Right. Uh, so um, yeah, it's it's uh it's a it's, it's a tough choice. Tough choice. Yeah. So yeah, so the Zags here uh change his attacks from melee to ranged. Okay. The first one is throwing axe, and it's a three strength ranged attack with a range of one. However, before the attack, you can discard a card, and if you do, you get two additional range. And then you just target a unit in range. So right. that's a good effect. Um, maybe if you've played your silver card earlier in the round, so you yep. have an extra card to discard, you can do that to get additional uh, additional range. But I feel like because of the low attack value, this is really when you were trying to push the lane. That's a big pivot, get yes. more flexibility in terms of minion kills. I agree. Than going for hero kills. Yeah, you could still... It could still be useful if your team is going for kills via a, a thousand cuts, like several hits in, in the same round. Um, sure. this, this can leave you a little more flexible to contribute to that, but you're not going to be getting those big, oh, sucks to be you, you didn't have an eight defense to this card kind of, kind of out of nowhere kills with this. Right. And what, what's the uh, accompanying stat bonus? It's initiative. It so is. So it makes you a little faster as well. Yeah. Interesting. And then finally, throwing spear, which is um, a similar ranged attack. It's got an initiative eight, defense six, movement four. And by the way, throwing axe also has movement oh, four. Oh, that upgrades so their movement. Are, yeah. yeah, those are faster cards. Um, and then this comes with an additional movement. So that makes this effectively a movement five card, which right. is very fast for Brogan. Yeah. Um, and then its text reads, before the attack, you may discard a card plus two range if you have a card in the discard, meaning that you don't have oh. to discard a card to turn on that effect. If you've already discarded a card, that effect is on, and it gives you plus uh, plus two range. A little bit of, I know there's another character that's all about enrage, that that's a game term, but it's kind of, it, that's kind of the barbarian rage. It's like if you've been hit, right. then you're... <laughs> you throw way yeah. farther. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and and as we said, that comes with the movement. So yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's sort of the zag there is to pivot to weaker ranged attacks yeah and more movement or you know stronger slightly further you know dash attacks yep. with an additional radius for turning on some of your other effects yeah yeah and i think i think you summed it up i think for the most part it'll come down to what's your team's route to victory at that point right and if you're if you're upgrading a furious charge you've already got seven attack you probably try to take a couple more attack items and you're just trying to line up the one shots at that point those the nine attack <laughs> like right. just just unbeatable charges um and i feel like that be, that at that point that's probably your like your lot in life is to try to try to land at least one kill with that furious charge at the point where it's two or three um Two or three hearts, sure, and just just like and, end the, end the game with a big attack that there's that they couldn't defend. Yeah, and and your team would be hoping, hopefully, helping you line that up. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed we've been talking a lot about like your team's win condition, and I think that is very particular to like a four player game discussion because when you play oh, in six, you know, if the other team's going for minion kills, you need one guy at least to like you know or or one girl to stand <laughs> in the middle yeah. of the battlefield and prevent them from doing the minion kills. And I actually think Brogan might be a good choice for that, even if your mm. team is going for hero kills, depending on who your teammates are. That's a, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I could see that, um, because he just his positioning and everything always presents such a song, strong threat right. to, to everybody. And, and then, the, and then the, yeah, the minion manipulation and, and rescuing and everything. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I could totally see that. Uh, I do want to play, I have, I have, the majority of my plays have been four players. Me too. In guards. Too. Uh, I well, definitely want to get, get to some of the higher player counts. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, should we look at the upgrades to the green? Absolutely. As a reminder, the starting one was shield, which is the one that can uh, let you, it lets you discard a card to um, prevent a melee minion from being defeated. Right. In radius two. 
Bolster is uh, still five initiative, five defense, two, uh, two boots, two movement speed on it. Uh, at two radius, it says, this round, if a friendly non-heavy minion in radius would be defeated, you may discard a card. If you do, the minion is not defeated. So the text upgrade now includes ranged minions. Right, which is a very minor... Pretty, <laughs> pretty minor. small. Yeah. And it comes with an attack on the other card. Okay, so that's, that's I think, one of the big reasons to take this, is to get Maybe. that attack item. Yeah. Uh, it's a little better defense, but that's the only stat increase. Um, yeah, and then Fortify, as, uh, has, it actually slows down. Fortify is four initiative. Five defense, two movement, two radius, and says in this round, if a friendly minion in radius would be defeated, you may discard a card. If you do, the minion is not defeated. Uh, this, being able to protect the heavy and stop the push, that's a pretty big difference. I think that's right. Although, in theory, you know, if you protect the range one more turn, that's forestalling killing the heavy one more turn. True. Same with the melee, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure how great of an effect that is. I guess it's really strong if you're near the heavy, because hard for Brogan to move sides. Right. So the heavy is going to be on one side in the, you know, the four-player, six-player battlefield. But, you know, I don't know. I think it's okay. <laughs> but okay. That, that one comes with... Yeah. Oh, and that one just comes with a shield. So He's already pretty good at that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's not a huge, not a huge exciting card. All right, so we're not excited by these. Uh, I don't know. Give us some more exciting ones. So these are the, the musical ones. We've got oh, War, right. War Drum. Okay. This is a ranged skill, and it's got three range. Sorry, it's a five initiative, five defense, and two movement. And it says, a friendly hero in range may retrieve a discarded card if either you or that hero is adjacent to an enemy unit. So it's a little okay. heal. Yeah. Which, and then the the level three upgrade is, a friendly hero in range may retrieve a, res a, sorry, a resolved or discarded card, meaning they can pull one off their turn sheet. That's pretty strong. Right, if either you or that hero is adjacent to an enemy unit. And so that, I mean, if you can have a hero pull up their red card. Yes. That's... Crazy strong, it's right? healing, right. but it's also potentially enabling extra attacks. Yeah, that one was called Master Scald. I don't think you read that. What's a scald? I think it has something to do with playing this this instrument. Okay. The reason I think that is because of that Ashes character, Namine or whatever her name is, the mm -hmm. the unicorn die character. Okay. <laughs> she has some scalds in her deck. Huh. Fun and they're and they're for you there. And, and, and her and well, her die symbol is the musical note. Oh, okay. I think there are musicians. Is that, I mean, that makes sense. It's the yeah. upgrade to War Drummer. Fix yeah. it in post. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, what's... <laughs> we'll do some ADR uh, no, yeah. here to sound smart. Right? Instead yeah. of putting this card up, put up the Ashes skull. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so what do these come with, by the way? Uh, uh, let's see. If you're following that path, you would get initiative both times. Initiative, so this makes you faster. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sure there are some combos where you say, okay, I'm going to go down this path for green and mm -hmm. upgrade my initiative and get faster, and that's going to help me, you know, when I choose this other path for blue or this other path for red. Yeah. I think, actually, this probably pairs well with the mainline red because it's harder for people to avoid you if your initiative goes up a little bit. Like, going from that's 7 true. to 9 yeah. is not, not terrible, right? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, movement cards that would have moved them in that... In that gap, and, and yeah. would then be too slow. The um, I feel like those essentially healing cards, like they get better and better the higher the player count. Protecting a minion with your green card stays about the same, but having more having more options, more uh, likely to have teammates in range, and then also more uh, just more people who might have cards discarded or have played a valuable card that they have a good reason to recover. Like to me. I would probably definitely, probably definitely, mm -hmm. uh, go, go that path. If, like Maybe at six, definitely at eight or ten players. Well, when you get to eight, you're playing on two lanes. Oh, that's true. So then it's sort of just... So then you're about, about the same number of characters. That's, character that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So maybe at six, though, this yeah. is the way to go. That's an interesting theory, yeah. Yeah, hmm. I mean, I think having someone pick up their, their red card is just so strong. Yeah, if you, can, if you can pull it off. Because it does remind me, it doesn't work on yourself, right? It has to be another player? I think that's right. I think the text okay. of Friendly Hero only refers to your teammates. Because I think it would say you or a Friendly Hero. If it right, to okay. You or your teammates. So, yeah, I just feel like in, in four players, there's going to be so many situations where the person is not in range. Yeah, that's probably true. Although, yeah. I would say it also matters if that character is more of a ranged or melee character. True. Because they, you know, either you or they have to be adjacent to an enemy unit. Yeah. If they're going to be adjacent to an enemy unit, this effect will be on a lot more. 
there's a lot of turns out a lot of uh, things to consider in this Lots game. Lots to think yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, the blue upgrades. The uh, what was it called? Fist jab. What was the original? Brutal jab. Brutal jab becomes crushing punch. It is nine initiative, seven defense now, two speed. It's a skill that says move up to one space, then choose one. So that one space is new. Uh, remove a token adjacent to you or push an enemy minion adjacent to you up to two spaces. So the choices are the same. This adds a move of one space, essentially. Okay. Um, and it also adds a shield. Uh, oh, yes. That's from the item from the other card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this seems like a pretty good upgrade to... Um, did, wait, did he, no, initiative stayed the same, but... To now be deciding when you resolve the card between two spaces of movement or one space and pushing a, an enemy minion, um, that makes the pushing way more flexible, mm -hmm. right? Because you could change the, the direction that you're going to push it with that movement. Um, or, or get to one that you want. <laughs> right. Or next to, or right. something. Yeah, you're right. Um, changing the direction, because you're always pushing directly away. Changing the direction is really strong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so... I can see this being uh, one I would actually use its text on, whereas I felt like with the Brutal Jab, I almost never would. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Actually, let's, let's look at Savage Kick. I keep forgetting, yeah. that, I keep forgetting that we've been we're saying we were just going to read them both the and then talk, three, talk yeah. about them collectively. So uh, Savage Kick is Tier 3. Uh, it becomes 10 initiative, and then is a skill that says move up to one space, then choose one. Remove a token adjacent to you. Push an enemy unit adjacent to you up to two spaces. That's a big difference, That's since big it work, difference. works on heroes, obviously. Yes. Uh, that, I, I... And then Brogan is himself, this means he can put... It's in, I can't talk. He can set up his red card, pushes them two spaces, and then can charge in, right? Yeah, if his initiative's high enough. That, that's a big if, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. That, one, that one comes with a range increase. So I think hmm. actually that one is probably better paired with the red zag, the range attack. Zag. Yeah, which makes sense, because you're pushing them out, so you push them out want a range can, attack. Right. Yeah. And expanding the range of that card from one or three to two or four is probably a, a pretty big difference. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, it, it doubles the minimum. If, if you don't have the criteria to get the longer range that's right. built into the, the card. Discard, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big difference. Yep. For sure. And this also expands, so this doesn't work on the shield, because the shield uses a radius, mm. but it does also expand the um, the green zag, because these are ranged effects instead oh, of Oh, your effects. music is louder. So your, yeah, your music also <laughs> gets louder, um, and so that also probably makes it easier to help your, your teammate pick up a red card, for True. instance. Yeah. I do love... I, I think this is, at least in the Among the One Stars, uh, Brogan's one of my favorite characters. Because I love two things. I love, at least, like, I mostly compare games to video games because that's where I play the same character for hours and it's a big choice who you're going to be and stuff. But, like, I love tanks and I love support. So, okay. the, he, he does a lot of both. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good character for you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> say <absolutely>. so. <laughs> uh, what are his other blue cards? Oh, yeah. So, we've got um, Shield Bash which is a 9 initiative, 7 defense, so quite a high defense, mm -hmm. 2 movement card. It's this, and then it has a skill that says an enemy hero adjacent to you who has played an attack card this turn discards a card of Abel. Mm. So if they attack you and they don't kill you, they have to be ready to discard an additional card with a shield bash. And then the counter attack, which uh, ramps it up a little bit, says an enemy hero adjacent to you who has played an attack card this turn discards a card or is defeated. So if they don't mm. have a card left, they just get... That can actually be the, be the right. killing blow. Right. And you said if they attack you, but it could be that they were next to you and attacked a minion or another hero. That's right? true. They just have to have attacked. That's true. This seems tough to use, though. It does seem a little tough to like, use. It. Well, I mean, it, I guess it just depends, right? Like, if they're going for hero kills and they're sort of melee, they might yeah. be near you relatively often. But it's also kind of nice because... Let's say you they're getting ready to avoid your red card. Yes. And they're going to do that fun thing where they stand right next to you. And then actually you've played Shield Bash. Right. And you're going to make, instead of, you're going to punish them for making that move. That's a really clever, like, second level play. I, like I, I agree. I agree. We were talking about, like, oh yeah, maybe hold your red card until later and then let them waste their time trying to play around it while you have no intent to play it. Like, this is maybe a great card to throw into that sequence. Yeah. I agree. And then what... Uh, you get attack both times that you choose. So yeah, so I think that definitely yeah. goes with... So I'm, I wonder if we're coalescing around two builds, It right? seems like it. One where yeah. we have the, the 
you know, the main attack cards. We've got these blue cards, the mm -hmm. blue zags. And on the greens, we have probably... The, it could be either way. I guess it could go... Well, yeah. I think you probably want the initiative, though. So you probably mm. go with these greens to increase your initiative. Yeah, good point. Right? And then the other way you go is you go the red zag, you go the the blue main line, and then you get this range increase for yeah. your red zag, right? I wonder how many of these characters we're going to find as we go through this have two distinct builds in that way. Maybe yeah, they don't. Yeah. Maybe we're wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> maybe, we just came all, up with this right now. Maybe we're <laughs> oversimplifying. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what card you will probably never get, regardless of build? Right. <laughs> Brogan's Ultimate. Um, I, I know I, I told you, but, or I mentioned before filming, that I've now played this game a, a good handful of times. I've never seen anyone get their ultimate ever. Have you seen anyone get... Have you gotten your ultimate before? No. Have you In fact, seen I don't someone? think I've even seen anyone get their ultimate. And I haven't yeah. played that much more than you, I would say. Okay. Maybe, like, you know, twice as many games. Or sure. Which is not that many, but it's a long number. So. <laughs> wow, wow. Exposing me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they're fun to read, though. Yeah, at least. yeah, yeah so, they're exciting. So let's take a look. Uh, Brogan, if he reaches level eight, he becomes a one-man army. Uh, and the ultimate cards, if you're not familiar, because they've never mattered to you either, uh, they are not cards that you play as your action. They are some ability that is either like passive or triggers right. under certain circumstances, mm -hmm. but is, but is always always on. Right. They just sit right here next to your board and scare your opponents. Exactly. Uh, so one man army says you count as two minions during minion battle. If you would be removed during minion battle, you lose the push instead. Uh, this seems like hilariously incredible to me. Yeah. The, <laughs> the idea that your presence in the battle zone uh, essentially eliminates two of your opponent's minions every round. Uh, or prevents yours if, if they're if they're leading. Um, <laughs> just seems bonkers. Yeah, it seems really, really strong. <laughs> but all of the ultimates seem super strong. Like, if people are getting to the ultimate stage, yeah, they've probably won, you know, maybe. Or yeah. unless their opponent also has a really strong ultimate. It's yeah. Hard to say. We've never seen them happen. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. I almost want to, like, house rule a long game or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except yeah. even then the game would still end to push us half the time. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a shame that these don't see a little. I I I don't know what I wish was different. Like I wish that this was maybe an option a little earlier in the upgrading to take this and if this was a level three option or something. So it, they'd have to be balanced. They'd have to be. Now. Yeah. They'd have yeah. to be worse than they are. Yeah. Because they're so strong, right? That that's strong. Because yeah. you don't even have to play a card to do that. It's just always on. Right. Right. Yeah. right. It's just such a shame to me that there's these such cards that are you know like all the cards this game have amazing art have uh, such exciting text and then they just always stay face down in your upgrade pile forever. But think about how great it'll feel when you get one. It'll Someday. Be like a true accomplishment. It will. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And that is actually what I know um, I've been, uh, I'm, not, I'm never joking when I say to comment. Uh, well, sometimes I joke. I have not yet joked yet when I say, yeah, comment to let us know what you think on things. I really, really would love if you share, share with me, if you've played a lot of Guards of Atlantis, how often do you see the Ultimates? Like, yeah. Is it a skill issue? Is it because I am early in my uh, we both are, mastery yeah. of <laughs> Guards of Atlantis? Do, do experienced players tend to reach their Ultimates more because maybe there's just more push and pull and less accomplishing kills and stuff for, for experienced players than there are for newbies. I can imagine I, that. I can yeah. definitely imagine in our games it's you're sort of rushing towards the minion push mm -hmm. who can kill minions faster. Yeah. But I imagine, you know, when you get to higher level play it'll be just as much protecting minions as yeah. it'll be killing minions and then maybe that just extends the length of the game a little with, bit. With the one other... Uh, I guess the, the, the one... Uh, my counter argument to, to what I just said is that if you are slowing down the minion kills and even the hero kills and stuff, then where's the gold coming from that gets you to your ultimates? <laughs> you do kind of need to kill a finite amount of things. Not, I mean, you, you could just have the game last 50 rounds and get a pity coin every time, but more likely uh, the game is advancing towards a victory condition and that's what's even getting you your, your money. Yeah, I guess so, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're just meant to be Very mostly simple. aspirational. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, that was fun. Yeah. I, I enjoyed going through the cards. I think I learned a lot, actually, doing this. Me, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Any uh, any final takeaways on Brogan that, that we have at this point? I I feel like as we go through these, we will have... We'll probably have a lot to say. Like, three characters in, we'll have a lot to say about how they face off against the characters we've already done this with. Right? Yeah, because we'll be so point. familiar with them. 
But we can try like, and highlight some like character interactions now if we can think of any. Like yeah. for instance, wasps. You know, wasp can prevent movement. Mm. That's a very strong effect right after a push against Brogan when Brogan's trying to move to the new battlefield and oh. can't fast travel. Good point. You can stop if you can like waste Brogan's like red or blue card that has a bunch of movement on it. And forestall him joining the battlefield for an extra like two or three turns. Maybe. Yeah, that's a really strong effect, and I've had that happen to me, which is why I I can call it. Out <laughs> um, so that's a, an interesting interaction. Any others? Uh, I don't I'm know. Sorry, I don't know that any specific ones are popping into my head. I, I definitely think that uh, if and and I've never played with like drafting heroes or anything yet, but if you were drafting against Brogan, it's, it's play fast, play high initiative heroes uh, because he he's slow and his. It, he can just pretty easily be thwarted by going before him. Yeah. Um, even if it's even if it's not just his charge, but it's his uh, red card that has situationally extended range. That if you can kill the minion that he was standing next to or something before he before he goes, because you're faster than him, you can turn off that range. Also, like there's just so many ways to mess with him. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, I think I think that's that's his big weakness. Yeah. Well, the extra range comes from discarding a card. You're thinking of the green, oh, the green card. I am thinking of, yeah. But that's okay, yeah. yeah. But you can, still, you can turn off that green effect by killing a minion. True, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yep. Um, yeah, I can't think of any other specific hero interactions either. But we'll come back to that maybe. Yeah, as we, uh, yeah. I'm sure as we, as we do another one, Brogan will be on our minds as well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably end up talking about him a decent amount as we go forward. Uh, well, thanks. This is fun, Jordan. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy these. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed them too, if you did. Actually, or even if you didn't. Uh, it would be great if you subscribed to Optimal Play. That's that's the single best way to support the channel. We don't have a Patreon or anything, but we do uh, like doing this and uh, want to reach more people. So, um, yeah, if you subscribe to the channel for all of our uh, playthroughs and deep dive discussions like this one. Um, liking the video yeah. also helps us out. Comment your Brogan build. Like, how Ooh, do you yeah. try and build Brogan? What are some factors you consider if you're a big Garth player? You know? I'm actually I'm not not to um, not to just provide a glut of, of general questions all in our first video, but I'm really curious how uh, much experienced players uh, feel like they have a favorite build for a given character that they generally follow unless they have a... Like, yeah, it's hard how, to say. Yeah, w whether it's a playstyle thing or in, uh, in their opinion it's just best. Like, how often are there... Like, do people have a default path that like, okay, I'll deviate from it if it really calls for it, but usually I'm going to play Brogan this way, or... Or is it all? Is it always wide open to, to people who, who know what they're doing? It's so yeah. yeah, it's so hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I just imagine like, what if you're going up against a hero and you know that their highest defense is eight or something? Right. So you're trying to take your attack upgrades. You know, to try, it's try, true. Like go yeah. one over. Like that is such a crazy like high skill ceiling and card knowledge base that yep. lets you make those little distinctions. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't need to take initiative. Initiative doesn't benefit me because they're already so much faster than me, or they're already so much slower than me, or whatever. And it's there even even in these one star characters to have that that level of, of uh, thought that goes into right. <laughs> playing them correctly. It's Absolutely. a really impressive game in that way. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I think we'll call it there. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thank yeah. you for watching. Till next time, be optimal.